So this is Hodge Fleming. I'm excited to be here. Um, this is something that we call Rebrand Black. It's a series of conversations around Black excellence, Black genius, Black innovation, uh, and Black culture. Uh, and so today I have I have the honor the, the honor and the pleasure of talking to Paul Stewart. Paul Stewart is a legend. Uh, he's from Crenshaw. Uh, I had I happened to watch a uh, a video and it was entitled "A White Boy from Crenshaw." So, Paul, I'm glad to be here with you. For those who are just being introduced to you by name, but I know they know of your work, um, can you give us just a little bit of background? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I started out as a DJ, uh, and uh, that kind of progressed into me doing, like, street promotion. I had my own street promotion company, and then, and then quickly into management. And I discovered a bunch of uh, L.A. rap artists that are pretty iconic, uh, I was House of Pain's first manager, got them their record deal. Right after that, I discovered The Far Side and I got them their record deal. Uh, I was Coolio's first manager, uh, worked with him for five years. We recorded Gangster's Paradise in like my living room at my house or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, I, I, I got a, eventually I got a label deal with uh, Def Jam and I signed Montel Jordan, put out This Is How We Do It. Um, and right around that time, right before that time, I had met John Singleton. And he hired me to be the music supervisor on Poetic Justice, his second film. So I got to work with Tupac and, and uh, you know, hang out with him. And that's where I discovered Warren G. Uh, and so, you know, I, at that time, I was just, you know, I, I was on a roll. You know what I mean? On fire. We on fire. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it just was, it really helped me that I grew up in, in, in a black neighborhood and everything, I think, because... Uh, I was just comfortable anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when I worked for Ice Cube, he had a, a marketing and promotions company and it was in the rolling 60s neighborhood, you know? I used to go there every day to his to his office, you know? And then uh, that's where I met Coolio. And, and this funny story is when he was living in Nickerson Gardens in Watts, you know, and he told me to come pick him up. And I was, you know, look, obviously I'm born in, you know, Kretsch area. I'm working in the 60s hood every day. I'm like, you know, pretty like, familiar with LA and it's, but Nickerson Gardens is a whole nother thing. I mean, like I really <laughs> hadn't even seen that. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. this, is kind of, this is kind of before the glamour of vacation of certain uh, uh, projects and a lot of videos and stuff, you know, and I didn't even really know I was there. And I, I was a little like, you know, and, and Coolio came out and he said, oh, everyone thinks you're an undercover cop. You know, you're okay. But uh, you know, one of the things, <laughs> kind of funny story, right? but I mean, one of the things for me is that you know, I never tried to be anything that I wasn't. My family is white, they're very white. You know, I, I have this kind of a upbringing, but I just was around all black as a young kid. I was like, there were like two white kids in the elementary school I went to and, you know, but I had a really unique upbringing because on my block, there's a, a black brain surgeon, there's a black judge and there's a black NFL player. And we're right above the notorious jungles. I literally walk through the jungles and take the bus to the jungles every day to go, to school and everything so I, you know you're seeing like so much everything right you know what i mean so you're 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 not li like when people grow up in certain like uh uh impoverished areas you know it's kind of their scope can be limited because they're not seen as much you know what i mean and the, mm -hmm. and and the opposite is true for the people that grow up in in more uh elite areas like they're really removed from what's happening you know so you know Baldwin hills area of crenshaw where i'm from you know is a really unique you know, place and uh, because it's right in the community, but you know, it's it's uh, it's a place where where um, successful black people decided to live that wanted to still be in the community and wanted to have nice homes. So you're surrounded by this positivity of this kind of of, of black people in your neighborhood, and and the very real realities of what uh, the majority of black people in uh, Los Angeles, uh, uh, the country, are dealing with. You know what I mean? So it, very acute of kind of like things like white privilege and, and uh, uh, you know, all my friends just get pulled over way more than me. And just, you know, like you just can't help but like, you, yeah. know, you know, see these things and, and, and just have a different perspective on things. You know what I mean? So I feel yeah. truly blessed, you know? And I had, I had a wonderful experience growing up there. I was, uh, uh, I really, I didn't really receive um, the kind of uh, uh, racism or prejudice, excuse me, that you might think or some people might assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about you, though, I think about like 
So if I think about if I think about black culture and I think about like the hip hop movement, um, and so I'm from Detroit. And so mm. when people think about, you know, who are the people who are in the game who are not who are not black, right? You know what I'm saying? So you think about like an Eminem, right? Sure. But like, you know, and he you know, he can obviously drop bars. But like sure. I look at you and like and you obviously are woven into the fabric of of, you know, of the hip of kind of like the golden hip hip hop hip hop era. Yeah, I was around before him doing stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. For, for quite a while, you know. And and you know, our upbringings were very different. And I would, you know, I taking nothing away from him, you know, or anything like that and you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's interesting because like when I had my label, I had a guy in Detroit, Mark Hicks, who was running my street team and he was later like uh one of D12's managers, you know, when they came okay. out, and yeah. stuff, you know. But so yeah, I the I you know, I've I've been able to help a lot of people. Uh, you know, one of the things I'm most proudest of is uh, all the um, executives, people of color that came out from working under mm -hmm. me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people that were either employees or interns or that we hired like as, you know, street promoters or DJs or like, you know, the, I, I touched a lot of people. And, it, you know, at the time I didn't, I didn't think nothing of any of that. I was just doing what would came natural to me, you know what I mean? But later, mm -hmm. I see all these guys with careers like, well, you know, I helped a lot of artists and that was cool, but wow. Like, you know, like just, just because I saw other people doing different things, you know, I seen the nepotism and um, on both sides, you know, which I'm not a fan of, you know, like, you know, like if a black exec is like, well, I'm gonna hire this less qualified black person. Like, okay, I mean, that's your right. And I get that more than I would a white person doing it. But either way, it's still like, you know, when you're dealing with art and culture and everything like that, it's like, that's not how it should work. Like, you know, I, I just feel like the people that are, are, are the most uh, talented and this talented. And that, who you should want to have around you, you know? And, and, and for me, it was just because I was so part of the culture, it was like, and we had all races. I wouldn't say they weren't like they're any white, weren't any white people that ever worked for me or interns. Of course, I gave people opportunities of whatever race they were. I mean, we had a, a smorgasbord of, you know, ethnicities uh, of people working at uh, my, my various companies, my street promotion company and my, and my label, you know. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, like it's it, it's cool where we, like I'm blessed. I had this amazing, unique experience, right? But like, if you know, I'm a, curious. I'm curious, yeah, Paul, too. So, um, you know, how do you in a space to where you know what I'm saying like I'm I'm used to as a black man being in situations where I'm one of the only, right? And mm. so, um, and so I'm used to living in two different worlds. Um, sure. Most so most I would say. Caucasians or whites that I know who are in in the reverse situation, it's not as common. How did you not lose who you were? Still, you know, still stayed authentic to who you were, but you could kind of thrive in an environment to where you could count on one hand. Like, you know, anytime you went somewhere, it was going to be you and maybe just a few others. Right, right. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I, I love going to uh, the communities, let's say. Mm -hmm. I mean, just word yeah. like that. I love, yeah. so I, I'm all the time going to places where I'm the only white person. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's like, I, I think that it's a little ingrained in you. I, well, I, I don't know because you know, some people turn out totally different, you know, but for me, just, I enjoy the, the uh, um, I enjoy being in these environments per se. You know what I mean? It's not, it's just because you find like people that are, uh, 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 you know, um, it's just more uptight, more straight laced in the other kind of environments. So, you know, it's yeah. just, it's not the vibration that I'm necessarily looking for. And look, <laughs> I, look, I like nice things. I'll go to some bougie, but I'm not like, you know, but you know, for me, I've just always, because I think, you know, when you're a little kid and you're like, you know, and you're in elementary school and there's two white kids there, everybody else is black. And you know, this, I'll give you a funny story. I was running for um, a, a school office in fourth grade and my mom, pulled me to the side and she said, hey, I don't want you to be disappointed if you don't win because, you know, some people might not vote for you because you're white. And like the concept was kind of like alien to me. I was kind of like, really, you know, because I was still pretty young. I hadn't started to really, I'm not getting any hatred at school. So I'm not really seeing, you know what yeah. I mean? So much of this huge like division or whatever. 
and then I won, you know, and I was kind of like, See, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, but, but, you know but, but that's like an analogy for my whole experience of being in that community and living there. And, you know, I lived there until I was 18, then I moved away to college and then I moved back for a little while. And now I'm back. I live in Crenshaw. And there, like I was talking just before we started videoing, uh, you know, the call came on. This, there's this incredible vibrant scene going on in Lamert Park right now. Um, there's a couple OGs, um, Chase Infinite and uh, Akil, Akil and Taz Arnold and that open these incredible like spaces and there's this incredible vibrant community of young creative people and some older people too but you know I've just met like I was a little out of touch you know with like a younger community you know what I mean you move on yes. you get older you're like and I'm now what's so great is and I miss some people and people were kind of like okay yeah you're Paul like whatever like you know because the one where I was ringing I was ringing you know and then oh after that you know the industry is very like well what have you done this week you know what I mean but we're in an era of 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 appreciation of the nostalgia and you yes. know uh, uh so this is going on so now I'm getting my props and the, and the fact that I'm in Lamert and dealing with all these young artists and 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 I'm very open to just try to I give seminars about music publishing or right you know I'll sit artists down and give them you know you want to learn something about the business like I'll sit there and talk for you know hour have you know what I mean I you know you videotape me put it on whatever you know I I love to give knowledge I mean mm -hmm. When you work with artists to understand the business is if you're like a manager or assigned to a label so much better because when artists don't actually understand the business then their complaints are like non they're just not realistic you know what i mean and things like that but yeah. it's been really rewarding for me to get involved in this new creative movement that's going on in Lemur and to try to like continue to give back you know like i had said earlier too one of the things i was most proud of was all the young executives that spawned you know from from my companies and everything and so but this is exciting yeah. you know yeah 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 so um so who were some of the executives that you end up um I oh well some of the people that them. interned for me were like james andrews you know was my mm -hmm. intern uh fuzzy who was you know a uh, big boys uh uh, co-host on Power 106 and is now, you know, went to Priority and Capital and everything. And, 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 and Big Boy wasn't an intern, but like we were, like I rented Big Boy's, uh, uh, Big Boy would rent my turntable for like 20 bucks and I rented a speaker <laughs> for like 40 bucks. We were DJing little parts. And I, I hired Big Boy to do uh, security for the far side, which kind of helped him you know, lead into some things, you know, but uh, directors, uh, Darren Grant and Rashidi Harper were interns. Uh, Employees were uh, Fabian Duvernay, who went on to run like Interscope for a long time, and then Death Row. Malik Levy, who had a career at BMI for like 20 some years. Uh, Shane Mooney, who went on to Loud. Now he works with, I think, Mike and Keys. Um, Adrian Miller, uh, who's gone on to do all kinds of things. Anderson Pax manager. Um, okay. It's a lot. Right. You know, yeah, and, 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 yeah, you yeah it's a lot. You got to live. Yeah, and um, Tina Davis, I hired, gave her first job. She went on to be Chris Brown's manager. You know, so it was just, you know, like, I helped out a lot of people. And, and you know, and look, it's a give and take. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to sit here and go, oh, I did all this stuff for people or whatever. Like, you know, I, I gave them the opportunity. They were probably doing a good job for me. You know what I mean? I, I was pretty yeah. serious about, you know what I mean, about, about yeah. that. You know what I mean? So, you know, we had a lot of fun, though. Like, we were... We, my companies weren't near as serious as some of the other companies. And maybe this is why we didn't last as long. You know what I mean? But I, and I morphed into more of an independent contractor as a music supervisor. You know what I mean? But, you know, there are a yeah, lot of reasons. Yeah, and and I'm, really, I'm really excited about, uh, I just started a new company called View Park Records. You know, View Park is an area of Crenshaw that's very close to where I grew up. And my partner, Evan Washington, is, is from View Park. And, you know, he's a younger guy than me. And and, uh, and we started like a, a label and, and and just really excited about what I can build. And especially with the um, excitement around the trailer, the, the white boy from Crenshaw trailer that I just dropped. Okay. Um, you know, Snoop saw it and loved it. Uh, Baron Davis hit me up today, said he loved it. DJ Pooh, uh, Sean Money, uh, Lord Jamar from Brand Nubian said he's going to put me on the podcast. He dug it. Uh, huge entertainment people that I won't even start naming because I just don't okay. want to like, yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah like, um, it's, it, th this is going to get, you know, I, I made the trailer because I didn't really have the resources to do it as a full documentary or anything yet. And boy, and I was like, this is going to bring the right partners to me. And, and it, it worked like beyond, uh, my wildest imaginations, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, man, that is like super, super cool. So now if we, so we fast forward like to today, um, sure. and so like there's these narratives about 
about, um, you know, about black culture and all kind of things kind of going on. Um, I would love to get your viewpoint in terms of like how, how you see black culture or what does that mean to you or what does black mean to you? Um, you know, I'm always interested. Yeah. You know, trying yeah, to get a fresh eyes approach. Yep. That's heavy question. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, you know, um, I mean, black culture is so deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want to undersell it by like some kind of like answer okay. that doesn't do it justice. Uh, okay. I'm usually not at a, a at, at a loss for words, but I, I'm definitely <laughs> like kind of struggling a little bit with this. But one, I mean, one thing I could say is that um, black culture has been used and abused uh, since pretty much the beginning of the entertainment industry uh, uh, mm -hmm. in America uh, and taken yes. advantage of. And uh, 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 I mean, you know, you got you got Pat Boone covering songs uh, that were you know, a black artist wrote and doing this like whitewash, you know, uh, mayonnaise horrible version of it. It's selling like a hundred times more. You have black. I'm talking, and I'm talking about. I'm going way back a history lesson. You yeah, have black uh -huh. artists having to put like white uh, pictures of girls on their cover of their albums, you know, and, and so people don't, you know, don't know who the artist is, you know. And I mean, just the racism in the entertainment industry is 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 deep rooted. And uh, and uh, even though, like in the music industry, there is a lot of opportunity for people of color, and and more than ever, you know what I mean, is exciting. Uh -huh. But you know, especially when you get in the film and TV, I mean, you know, this this is systematic, like uh, uh, oppression of black culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me yeah, let me speak to the area that I know the most, right? So okay. you know, yeah. you have white people who aren't in touch with black culture, and then even some out of touch black people. Uh, mm -hmm. making the decisions on what should be kind of put forward as, you know, black culture and entertainment, right? You know what I mean? Because I don't even want to get into like the whole like social, yeah. political, you know, you know what I mean? So like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah I, got you. I got you. I'm a student, I study, but you know, this is what I really know, right? So, okay. you know, you know, like people have been making money off of black art, black culture uh, uh, in the music and film business and, and also and, and in the film business more apparently like getting it, like whitewashing the stories, not letting the stories being told by the authentic voices or whatever, you know? And yeah. look, I'm white and I work on a lot of these great films. You know, I understand that I'm white, you know, but as a music supervisor, if there's somebody who's better than me, okay. But, but you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, because I grew up in this environment and I'm, I'm a lover of it, I, a part of the culture, I feel qualified to be involved in these the, these kind of projects. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. And I've worked for obviously like great directors of, uh, of color. I mean, John Singleton believed in me. You know, I kind of put, throw the mic down and, and, and walk away after that. You know what I mean? And it hired me for yeah. a lot of stuff. But I've helped a lot of filmmakers uh, uh, with their first films and this and that. And, and so I've seen the whole process and everything like that. And and it's frustrating often because sometimes, you know, you've got people and, and then some of the way they market the films is, it's, you know, it, it can be very frustrating. So it, like, like you said earlier, before we got on the call, I think this is a moment now. You know what I mean? So hopefully yeah. we can kind of right some of the wrongs and some of the people that have cool uh, uh stories like mine people are interested in them now and um and, and just and, and a lot more people of color being able to tell their stories authentically you know um i mean it's exciting you know I, I, the yeah. movement that i do see though you know what i mean like you know that's yeah. in front of me in in, in lamert and in general in like urban culture i mean like the mute or black culture let's say more appropriately mm -mm. i mean the the, the music movement that's going on right now of new music is, I think, phenomenal. There's just so much good music coming out right now. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of talented, like visual people too. And I, and I just want, um, I want Hollywood, the it system to get behind these kind of voices, you know, because, you know, it's frustrating. I've seen people like John Singleton get involved in projects, and then his voice stifled. I'm like, Jesus. You know what I mean? Like after what this man has accomplished, you know what I mean? So imagine what it's like for like first time filmmakers and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So Yeah. yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with James Edwards and one of the quotes that he used and we got the quote from somebody else. He said, um, and it was, we're typically the oil, but we're never the machine. Um, and so, you know, and so I thought that was pretty, pretty powerful in terms of mm. sometimes we're just the talent. Um, and I think, you know, getting to a point of learning the business side of yeah. anything. 
music or things like that. Um, um, how hard was it for you to learn the business of music? Oof. Like, not just very creating hard. great sound, but like the very, business, because it's rough on that side of it. It table. was very hard for me because you got to understand, I came into this as a fan. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't have this grand plan. Of, and also, too, you got to remember the era I came in, there were no examples like Puffy or just, just you, we didn't see like, I didn't even know what the music business was already. I, I didn't, there's companies that make the record. I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't have any, I didn't have any exposure to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My father was an engineer. We live in Crenshaw. There's no a lot of like, entertainment people that, that I was around. OK, you mm -hmm. know, so there were a lot of black entertainers and stuff around in that area for sure. You know, but I, it, not that I was exposed to as a young person. Right. So when I mm -hmm. when I got into the industry, like I learned by, you know, knocking my head against the wall, you know what I mean? And uh -huh. like getting jerked by the big companies and by artists because I was kind of naive and too friendly and or, you know, it's hard to regret some of that. You know what I mean? But but, you yeah. know, because I, I, the integrity of holding my head high and, you know, dealing with people. But yeah, I mean, the business is 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 I've seen it wash people. You know what I thought about, man, the other day was, you know, a couple of my friends were more successful than me. There's three entertainment executives, two are of color and one is white that I'm about to name right now. They were all more successful than me that all committed suicide. There was Sean Karazoff. They called him Captain Pissy. He was at Jive. He helped sign Tribe Called Quest. Before that, he worked with the Beastie Boys. Before that, he worked with like the Sex Pistols. Like he has a crazy career. The other one is, of course, well, uh, uh, Chris Lighty. Mm -hmm. Many people know. You know, he's Fifty Cent's manager, and 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 um, and, and there was uh, um, my man from Atlanta. Uh, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't think of his name right now. I'm sorry, man. But you know, <laughs> it, you know, it's just like, here are guys that, Shakir, Shakir Stewart, I'm so sorry. We used mm -hmm. to kid with brothers, you know what I mean? So, and you yeah. know, Shakir was part of the LA Reed thing and everything, you know? So, he, I mean like, here are people way more successful than me. Two of them definitely made a lot more money than me and all killed themselves. Yeah. I mean, the stress of the, you know, I mean, Chris Lighty was killing it when he did. And Shakir was also at a very, you know, high point in his career and everything. You know, the, the, the Sean Karazoff had had quite a, like, you know, roller coaster ride. So his was almost like a little more, you know, understandable or whatever. And he had started working with Anonymous. So all those guys go, yeah, he killed himself. Like, they don't even believe it. You know, it's certainly a possibility. You know what I mean? But, um, but it just goes to show how stressful the music entertainment is how unforgiving it is and it's cold you know i mean there's a lot of people that I, you know i'm not really that happy with because you know i helped them out greatly and they're not around now for me but you know that and that and and so you know that's what it is you know but like you can't be bitter you can't you know you'll you'll, you'll be miserable you know what i mean you just gotta you just gotta count your blessings and get smarter mm -hmm. on each time and kind of look at people like okay i see how you did it Okay, so that's how you are, you know, and because like I've gone back into business with people that I wasn't really happy about the way deals had happened before, but I approached it from a different standpoint. It's like business, you know, or, or done business with people I wasn't that crazy about, but it's like, you know, you don't always have the option. Yes, 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 yes. So I think, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, like um, in life, you know, if I'm gonna go through a situation, if I learn something, then it's not like I failed, right? You know what I'm saying? So I got something right. out of it. And I think that's critically important. Um, right. And I think also too, just like the more I start to understand the business and I look at like, you know, Kanye online talking about his contract and, you know, right. and you start to see this movement towards independent artists. Sure. Um, I think with the tools that are available today, now that's more of an option and people are, are looking at it, but, but that does have a long tail to it. Like you have to build your community. You have to do all the things that, that's yeah, the, the artist label. or his team has to be a marketing director or this. Yeah, it's not the old yeah. days where you could just make art. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is definitely. But it's very exciting, yeah. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we're in just like a different generation. So as we close, you know, one of the things. So as I watch your, um, as I watch your short trailer, um, right. it was it was really interesting just kind of hearing your story. Um, mm -hmm. So, so how long did it take to put that together? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, was it like kind of a nostalgia look? You had a chance to kind of go back through those moments or what? 
it's interesting because I've had the idea forever and I licensed some of the footage, some of the archival footage for this project, like probably 10 years ago. Okay. Um, and I had wrote like the outline of like a book, like a long time ago. Um, and then I was stagnant on it for quite a long time. And I was mm -hmm. kind of like waiting for like some more stuff to happen to me. Yeah. To make like a better ending. Right. And um, some of those things happened. And then, you know, and then I, and then, it and then, but, and then I started, I, there was one editor I was trying to get to do the trailer and we, we couldn't quite get it together. And then I, I found the guy who made it. And, and after I found him, as soon as I gave him the idea, it was like incredibly fast. It was like weeks. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, like. I had all that footage. I, I had had, I had, there were a couple of people that were supposed to edit it. So I had gone through and go, look, here's links to me, you know, in the studio with NWA, here's this, here's that, here's a bunch of pictures of me with celebrities. Um, you know, I, I, I want to use a lot of photos in it because I don't have that much video content. You know what I mean? And I want to mm -hmm. try to grab things off the internet or other things where people talking about me, you know? And um, so I, I had some of those links and everything all together. And I, I couldn't find the right editor, you know. And then I found my man Marcus Thornton. It's really interesting how we connected because he he tracked me down. He had written a uh, he has written a, a Far Side biopic, and okay. it's really good. And so uh, you know, I came on board as a producer. And you know, we're getting some interest from some great people. And um, as we're trying to move that along, I said, "Hey, you're you're an editor, right?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, what do you think about?" And you know, uh, he killed it. I mean, like the, the, I've had some big filmmakers and TV film people like just in love with the trailer to the fact that they really want to do business with me on the project. So, and then just the like, you know, Snoop giving it the thumbs up, uh, Baron Davis today, DJ Poo, Shaw Money, Lord Jamar. I mean, I'm getting incredible feedback like across the board. I mean, right now, you know, we're only at like a little over 4,000 views it's got a couple hundred likes one dislike uh, you know okay. it's, it's a racial issue about a white guy <laughs> i'm sure they're coming but like that's haters pretty going hate. you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah haters yeah. are gonna hate haters are gonna hate though yeah, man. But that is <laughs> if you don't have haters you're not popping but um yeah. yeah so it was it was it was a long long process of like 10 years but then when i actually yeah. got it going it was like weeks it was so fast you know but 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 i had done my it the for me to get all those pictures together and those clips and do that, that took a, that took a little time. And yeah. Like, you know, that was still like on probably a week or two, but it was before. Cause I got already yeah. done that work, you know, and then when I found this guy, we, we just, we cranked it out, you know, so. Man, I love it. Um, Thank man. you, man. Thanks for the opportunity, you know. Yeah, This is for yeah. Cadillac, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or less. yeah. I'm yeah. a Cadillac fan. I was a Cadillac owner. So, oh, you know. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, they're gonna be happy to hear that for sure, man. I love Cadillac. Yeah. It's a great brand, man. You know, what yeah. I'm like it's tied to our community, and so we're super excited about that. For sure. Yeah. So I, so I am glad that we had a chance to talk. So, Paul, if somebody wants to find you online, what is the what is the sure. best place? Yep. Paul underscore DJP underscore Stewart on Instagram, and it's basically it's it's like instead of underscores, it's dots at Facebook. And okay. I could definitely be slower on responding to Facebook messages, but I'm really good about my Instagram, you know? So okay. yeah, hit me up there. I mean, I think there's a contact email in my Instagram too, or whatever, you know, people can email me from that or just send me a DM. I'll read it, you know? Okay. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm always looking to connect with people and, 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 and see what, you know, find some great stuff and work with people, help people get their art exposed. All right, man. Sounds good. Paul, I definitely appreciate it. I will definitely be in touch. Um, oh, and I look That's forward, man, to staying connected, man. Thank you for all the work that you've done for the culture um, and putting people on for sure. Oh, man, thank you. That means a lot. Okay. Hey, great to meet you, man. I look forward right. to talking in the future, okay? All right, anything yeah, you yes, need sir. from me, just let me know for sure. Okay, okay? all right. All right, take care. Right. Yep, peace.